Hello, I'm here to finish up this paper, which is chemistry 1 from the year 2021, grade 12, 5070. I'm starting from question 21 to question 14. Let's get to question 21. Okay, so there's our question 21 right here. Which of the following is a redox reaction? My answer was B. Redox reactions involve either electron transfer, hydrogen transfer, or oxygen transfer, or just change in the oxidation state or the charge on an ion. So in this reaction here, there's hydrogen, there's chlorine. Then here there's a hydrogen sulfide plus chlorine gives us hydrogen chloride and sulfur. Um, um, in this case, uh, chlorine is having a charge of zero, okay? And uh, sulfur is having a charge of minus two. After the whole reaction, the charge for sulfur goes to zero. Because in this case, sulfur has received or is sharing electrons with hydrogen. Let me just say it's sharing electrons with hydrogen. So it's partially, it has partially received electrons from hydrogen. So it is somehow reduced. Here, it's not sharing with anyone. So its oxidation number has moved from negative 2 to 0. But chlorine, from being 0, no charge, it is partially sharing electrons again with hydrogen, meaning it has partially gained, meaning it's partially negative. Therefore, there is some kind of gain and a loss of electrons in this equation here. So, if you want to check if a reaction is a redox reaction or not, you have to you have to check is there any gain or loss in the number of electrons, gain or loss in oxygen, gain or loss in hydrogen. So the most appropriate equation is this. You can pause the equation and study a little bit more so that you see what I mean by that. Number 22, sulfur trioxide is produced by the following reaction. Sulfur dioxide plus oxygen giving us sulfur trioxide and uh, energy of 195 kilojoules. Um, which, change is in the, in, which change in condition would reduce the amount of sulfur trioxide at equilibrium? Uh, increase in temperature. Look at this reaction. It is exothermic. This minus means it produces heat and this heat is projected out of the reaction system. It is exothermic. So they're asking which change in condition would reduce the amount of sulfur trioxide at equilibrium? Increase in temperature. Okay, increase in temperature. If you increase the temperature, then the forward reaction is going to slow down and the forward reaction is the reason uh, or maybe is the one that brings about sulfur trioxide. Our answer is C. Number 23. Consider the following compounds. This is potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and copper hydroxide. Which of these compounds is which of these compounds are alkalis? One and two. Alkalis, all of these are bases. A soluble base in water is called an alkalis. Therefore, the ones that are soluble in water are this one and this one. Group one, group two. This one is a transition element. Its hydroxide is insoluble in water. So our answer is A. One and two only. I move to the next question, uh, 24. What will be the color of the universal indicator when a solution of sodium chloride is added to it? So universal indicator is, is, is green, and green uh, shows that it's, at, it's neutral, in its neutral condition. It becomes red or pink, begins to get reddish when, it, when it's in acidic condition, and begins to get purple or bluish when it, it it's in basic condition. And when you add sodium chloride, this is a neutral salt. No hydrogen protons produced, no hydroxide ions produced, therefore it will remain green. 25. An attempt to prepare a soluble, an insoluble salt. In an attempt to prepare an insoluble salt, a learner reacted aqueous barium nitrate with aqueous ion 2 sulfate. Which ionic, which ionic equation below is correct for the reaction? So this is an equation which has already been ionized and they're asking for uh, which one will be correct. So you are reacting barium nitrate, a soluble salt in aqueous, and then ion 2 sulfate in aqueous already, a soluble salt. And you and me at this point should not say barium react to sulfate, sulf, sulf, sulfate ions to form an insoluble salt which is barium sulfate which is insoluble. So at the end of it all, once you cancel out the spectator ions, you remain with this. Barium has a 2 plus, sulfate has, has got a 2 plus, I mean 2 minus. They form such a salt. This one, look at the charge, look at the charge, doesn't qualify. Uh, look at the charge, solid, they have put solid here, they have also put solid here. So these are same, but look at the state symbol. So it should be solid only here because it's insoluble. 
look at this aquas aquas uh, solid but uh, look at the charge here so the answer here is b 26 the following table shows uniform information in a 500 ml bottle of mineral water which entry in the following table is correct let me move the paper this camera of mine cannot pause so in a 500 ml this is half a liter ph then uh ph 70 7.2 this is the ph of the water bottle slightly alkaline very slightly 7.2 quantities per liter look at this per liter per liter grams per liter but this bottle is actually half a liter so which entry in the following table is correct my answer was c i was almost going for this but um um look at this okay 7.2 and then apart from that uh, the question is saying which of the following uh is is table is correct which entry in the following table which entry in the following table is correct state of the mineral water um, mass of chloride ions in the bottle okay mass of chloride ions in the bottle here um they have put chlorine is 2.0 milligrams per liter that's the information on the bottle but the bottle is half a liter and then they are asking for which entry in the following table is correct we only need to say it's slightly alkali because it's above seven so it's alkali and then they're asking for mass of chloride ions in the bottle the actual but the 500 mils when you look at the information per liter it will have 2.0 milligrams meaning half a liter will have half of this because this is per liter but in this half liter bottle it means it's going to be one milligram okay it cannot be two milligrams because they're asking for now in this one which is half a liter because concentration is measured per liter or per decimeter cubic because one liter is equal to one decimeter cubic so my answer here comes out this i was almost going for acidic because chlorine forms hypochlorous acid when dissolved in water but again i realized that the information is already given here to show that it's slightly alkali so my answer there comes out as c 27 which element in group 7 of the periodic table can displace all other elements in aqueous metallic halide solutions which element in group 7 of the periodic table can displace all other elements in an aqueous metallic halide meaning hydro um group 7 elements halogens halide solution the, 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 all these are group 7 elements and the most reactive is fluorine meaning it can displace the rest the most reactive followed by chlorine followed by bromine then iodine okay so that's the answer there c allow me to flip the page <coughs> Excuse me more. 28 the most metallic element in groups 2 of the periodic table is radium the the more you go down a group the the, the more the metallic characteristics uh come out so radium the one that is at the bottom of the group d is the answer 29 the following diagram shows part of the periodic table uh which two numbers present elements that can react together to form a compound with low melting point therefore my answer was three and four when these two react they are both non-metals so they may actually form something which is uh which can even be a gas or a, a, some kind of a plastic or so they, they, they're not metals and they, they would form a covalent compound because covalent compounds are formed among non-metals so covalent compounds are generally or generally have low melting points and they exist in three states so my answer here is three and four okay this is a metal huh even by itself it already has a high melting point this may have a slightly lower melting point but when it comes to this it will be way low number 30 iron iron is formed from the blast furnace when iron 3 oxide is reduced by carbon monoxide that's the most appropriate answer is reduced by carbon monoxide c 31 the following equations show the decomposition of nitrates of the metals r s and t R, S, and T. Therefore, these are the nitrates equations. Which row shows the arrangement of the metals R, S, and T in order of their reactivity? T is the most reactive, followed by R, then followed by S. For you to answer this question, you should know the thermostability of nitrates, okay? Also, carbonates, you know, those, those you know, thermostability of some metal compounds. So, just by looking, you can tell to say when a metal is very reactive, the product will be this and this, this, its nitrate, its thermal decomposition, or the thermal decomposition of its nitrate will be this. So, my answer here is A. 
Um, 32, which of the following is a chemical property of all metals? They are all reducing agents, meaning they donate electrons to become oxidized or for their charges to increase to positive. They form positrons. I mean, they form positively charged ions. They are electropositive. So the answer there is D. They are reducing agents because they donate electrons and gain of electrons is reduction. So when they donate, the one that they have given the electrons becomes reducing. So the metal is a reducing agent. Our answer is D. I move the camera. Um, 33, the following flowchart shows one of the industrial processes, gas P, gas Q, uh, compressor 250 atmosphere, that's pressure, iron catalyst at 450 degrees Celsius, then gas R. What are the processes used? What, which of the processes uses gas R? Which of the processes uses gas R? Um, this is the Haber process. Um, they are saying which of the processes uses gas R. I was a little bit confused here, but this is the Haber process. I don't know if they want, this is ammonia. It's likely to be ammonia, very much likely to be ammonia because of two gases, the iron catalyst, look at the temperature and the like. So my answer here came out as the Haber process. I don't know if I'm wrong here. You're free to, co to correct it. Otherwise, I took it up to be the Haber process. Please correct this one, check it out, just in case I didn't do it right. Number 34. The form of carbon with delocalized electrons is graphite, my man, graphite. This is diamond. Uh, all the bones in carbon are utilized in diamond. Coal is almost the same as charcoal. Charcoal is not compressed. Coal is compressed. Charcoal is porous. But two of them, sometimes they can interchange the words of charcoal between the two. This one is compressed. This one is not compressed. It's highly porous. This is the amorphous form of carbon, where only three of the four valence electrons in carbon are utilized. The fourth one is free, so they are said, or it is said to be delocalized. A is our answer here. And it's capable of conducting electricity because of this property here. 35. Dry air is mixed with gas, which is 99%. Dry air is a mixture of gases, which, of which 99% is nitrogen and oxygen. Uh, what is the main constituent of the remaining 1%? Water vapor, water vapor, helium, argon, hydrogen, these are very, 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 very minimum. But the water vapor is the one that covers this uh, extra 1%. 36. Which of the following can undergo addition uh, reaction? You have to look for the unsaturated species. So propene is unsaturated. Well, look at this propane, propane, you know, propa, but here there's an E. A, 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 E here, meaning unsaturated. It has a double bond, propene. 37, the structure of starch is shown uh, as follows. Oxygen, body, oxygen, uh, body of a molecule. Which entry represents the correct information about the type of bonds and their frequency of repetition in the structure as shown? The type of bond is glycosidic. Frequency of repetition I think they have shown three of them. This is one, two, then this here, plus this other one here, making them three. That's the frequency in which they have been repeated. Okay, the frequency, there are three. They have shown three of them. So my take was this one. Okay, I think I'm correct, very correct. Allow me to flip the paper to look at the last three questions. Thirty-eight. What is the total number of isomers formed by pentene? Pentene, pent, meaning five. Pentene. Ah, my answer was four. I went for four because let me to move the camera down once here. Um, they're asking for what? For isomers. Isomers are two or more compounds whose molecular formulas are the same, but structural formulas are different. Isomers are completely different compounds from each other because the reactivity or the chemical properties of these four compounds are all different from each other because of the structure and how much their active sites or their um, functional groups are exposed. So these were the ones I could extract. So understand that this can be flipped, can be flipped like this. So as you draw your isomers, understand that it shouldn't look like the other one that you have drawn after flipping or flipping like that. Whether you flip it like this, left to right, or upside down, it shouldn't look like the other one. 
so make sure that each one is completely unique in its bonding so i did try by all means to make sure that the carbon atoms are five and then the double bond is placed in places which are unique to each one of them so i could only think of five i could only extract five so my answer here came out i mean four uh, the answer he came out as four. My answer came out as four. Thirty-nine. What are the products of the of the hydrolysis of the following displayed compound? Uh, when you look at this, is an ester. This was the carboxylic acid side, and this was the alcohol side. Look, one, two, three. This was um, an acid with three, like prop propanoic acid. This was an alcohol with two, like ethanol. So ethanol, which is this then propanoic acid so the side where you have got this oxygen double bonded to this carbon tells you this or represents the or can tell you the type of acid that was used in this kind of um, uh, bonding okay or, or this kind of uh, uh, compound then the other side having or on the, the other side of the molecule tells you the type of uh, alcohol so it's ethanol and propanoic acid and yeah, as we name these compounds the esters always start with the alcohol side so the alcohol is eth so this is um, a, a compound uh, of ethanol and propanoic acid. Um, number 40, our last question here. When potassium carbonate is added to a sodium, is a solution of ethanoic acid. When potassium carbonate is added to a solution of ethanoic acid, the gas formed is carbon dioxide. Carbonate, the keyword here is a carbonate, and then the keyword here is acid. Acids react with carbonates to produce carbon dioxide, water, and a salt. And now here they're looking for a gas. Our gas is CO2. This marks the end of this paper. I'll see you in the next dozen and dozens of videos. I hope it was okay. And I know I'm quick, but hey, just work with me. Repeat the video. Pause. Repeat so that you can easily move. If I get to, if I spend too much time, it'll be dragging. I'll see you on the other side. Bye bye for now.